Okay. Good evening, everyone. We are live. The Heirloom Foundation um, is excited about In My Nature this evening. We're still getting adjusted, so we're going to wait for people to pop in. Um, I'm trying to actually get them to be able to share on their platform. So um, remember that you all are welcome in this space, that you can ask questions and engage how you like. Um, it's just a conversation. Anything that jibes with you, anything that resonates with you, please share because we want to know that we're saying something or offering something that is beneficial to you. Um, I do want to make sure that everybody is at least following one or both of our initiatives. It's always very important for us to um, gain these, this, you know, follower, these followers um, in order to grow. So you can find this uh, pair at the Daniel Fast healthy, I mean, the, the Daniel Fast, a bridge to healthy living. Is that correct? Yeah. Daniel yeah. Fast to healthy living is our yeah. IG handle. Okay. Yeah. To healthy living and well, Facebook. So you can give us a Facebook one. And too. Facebook. Yeah. It's the same thing. Daniel Perfect. Fast to healthy living. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and so we want to invite you all to, to do that and to follow us and then the heirloom foundation. So although we're not on G on IG at this moment, it is at the heirloom foundation. Um, and then on Facebook, it is the heirloom foundation or the heirloom fund. And then it pops up as the heirloom foundation. Um, but we want you all to be part of us this evening. So give me a second. Cause I really do want to figure out how to get you all connected. Let's see. You hear me talking to myself on here? Let's see. <laughs> okay. I'm going to send it to your. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I don't think that Gigi and I connected on Facebook. So. Okay. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So good evening to those of you who are watching us. We are uh, adjusting and connecting on social media. We are inviting everybody to be in this space. It does not, the, the, the dialogue does not go very long. I always thought an hour was quite a while, but when it's good, it just goes. Um, so please know that you are invited to have dialogue with us. You can text, um, well, you can message um, on either of my pages. Um, you can message if you're coming in through um, the Daniel Fast. Um, it is not a brief healthy living. I'm saying that wrong. The Daniel Fast, what? Da yeah, Daniel Fast to Healthy Living is our IG, but the full name, you're right, it is Daniel yeah, Fast to Healthy Living. I didn't want to get that wrong. I didn't want to get that wrong. It was an odd thing with mine too. So I was trying to do the Heirloom Foundation and it was already taken. So I had to do the fund. Um, and I was like, I'm going to confuse everybody, but I need to at least be on Facebook. So it, it's a start, but hopefully I'll be able to grab that, that uh, handle soon. Either way, we're getting started. It is Sunday, April 3rd. We are well a week into the spring season, at least here in Texas. Um, we're in three different states right now. Um, I'm in Texas. Gigi is in um, Washington State and Circe is mm -hmm. in Georgia. So mm -hmm. as much as we're really, really sick of Zoom and um, computers, I still love the fact that we're all over the place and doing, um, having these conversations and doing this wonderful work. So um, the Ellen Foundation established just a year or so ago. It has not been very long and it was established as a space um, for me to actually respond to my grandfather who was asking me questions about what we would do with the family land. You know, um, he's 92 years old, strong, okay, um, full of stories. And I didn't really have a response for him except for I would start something. Right. I would make sure that the land was secure. I want to make sure he has peace with that. So I started the Heirloom Foundation. But in that, started to delve into things like eco-theology, eco-therapy, um, the beauty of, of growth and uh, food, all these wonderful things. And so the dialogue expanded. And so I'm re I've reached out um, to these two wonderful people who will introduce themselves. Um, because I think it's really important to talk about what it means to eat 
from the land in the most natural way possible for our health, for our growth, for a larger vision of fulfillment and strength in our bodies, minds, and spirits. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce Circe first. You don't mind. Um, tell us about who you are and, and a little bit about your background. Okay. Um, my name is Circe and um, I am a health coach. I help women um, identify or connect their health to their faith. Um, and I'm the co-founder of Daniel Fossett Virtual Healthy Living with uh, Gigi. Um, and a little bit about my story on how I kind of you know, came to where I am today is it started um, in my last trimester of my pregnancy. Um, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. Um, and at the time, I didn't really think of it as anything alarming. My mom had high blood pressure. My grandmother had high blood pressure. So I wasn't really alarmed by it. But what I know now that I didn't know then was that people who are diagnosed with um, high blood pressure have a higher um, risk for complications before, during, or after their pregnancy. Um, and so during the delivery of the birth of my son, I did have a complication and he lost oxygen to his brain. And so for the first year of his life, he had to have 24 hour care. Um, and so it was a very stressful, emotional time. Um, and he ended up passing away on his first birthday a little bit after his first birthday. And um, as you can imagine, as a mom, as a family, um, I was completely distraught. Um, just kind of going through that grief period of just trying to make sense of everything and to grieve. Um, and just completely out of the blue, a friend of mine, and at that time, let me put this in there too, I think I'd gained the most weight that I've ever gained because again, you're in that grieving mode and you're using food perhaps as support and all of that other things. And so just out of the blue, a friend, um, a friend said to me, Hey, why don't we do the Daniel fast together? Um, and I've done the Daniel fast in the past. Uh, I probably tweaked it to my liking. I'm not sure I've done it purely back in those times. Um, but I remember not being sure if I really wanted to get into the Daniel fast. And for those of you who are not familiar, Daniel fast basically is a whole food plant-based diet, um, basically void of any kind of sugars, preservatives, anything processed. It's just eating food in its natural form. And of course you're combining that with prayer and devotion and that other things. Um, and so I said to her, well, I'm gonna do the Daniel fast with you you, but I'm going to tweak it a bit. I'm going to add eggs. I'm going to add this. I'm going to add that. And I remember that she just arrested me right on the spot. And she said, listen, if you're going to do this Daniel fast with me, you're going to have to do it exactly the way it's designed. And so I, for some reason, I felt arrested by that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it exactly the way it's designed. Um, and so what I did over the 30 days is I did it exactly the way it was supposed to. And I can't tell you if it was two weeks or three weeks, but within that time, everything changed. I lost weight. I, my blood pressure was regulated. Um, I had mental and spiritual clarity. Um, it was almost like a fog was lifted over my eyes from my eyes. It was just so many changes that I couldn't believe happened in that 30 days. And so I questioned myself. I said, well, was this a miracle? Did God just open the heavens and just, you know, just did all this or what was going on here? Was I some type of anomaly? And so I started to do research and I started to dig, I started to read the, the book of Daniel in a different way. And I realized that Daniel was never really doing a Daniel fast for 21 days and then going back to some other way of eating. That was his lifestyle first and foremost. And then secondly, when I started to do research just in modern day science, I realized that a whole food plant-based diet is the only diet that reverses, prevents, or manage heart disease. And so not only heart disease, and there was cancer and diabetes and obesity, and the list just went on and on. And I realized, wait a minute, there's something going on here with the connection between the way Daniel lived his life, the current science that's here, and what happened in my actual experience. And so I went on this journey of just helping women connect their faith to their food that there's a synergy that happens that when you change what's at the end of your fork, and you start to combine that with a spiritual experience, um, your life could be revolutionized. And so that's how we met up with Gigi and we both created the Daniel Fassett Birch to Healthy Living, but I'll let Gigi jump into that from her side. Wonderful, thank <laughs> you. Yes, please, Gigi. 
All right. So my health journey started back in 2007 when I was diagnosed with high cholesterol. And what happened was my doctor did a carotid artery scan of my neck to look at the plaque building up in my arteries. And that basically shows you your level of risk for developing a heart attack or stroke. And what it showed was that I I had the arteries of a 46 year old, but I was only 35 years old. So I was aging quickly. And around that time, I learned about the healing power of food. Uh, and this was through the science um, and specifically the research that Dr. Dean Ornish had done um, back in the 1990s with his lifestyle heart trial. He showed that you can reverse heart disease, like Cersei said, through eating a whole food plant-based diet through food and, um, and some other lifestyle techniques. <clears throat> At the time, I remember thinking, you know, there's no way I can give up meat or I could stop eating cheese or fish. And so I um, was just in this place where I had these limiting beliefs about not eating certain foods. And so I did what I thought was the next best thing. So I did what the government said was a healthy diet, you know, more poultry, fish, low fat dairy, that kind of thing. And so my cholesterol went from horrible to borderline bad and stayed there for about five years. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember getting to a point where the weight was starting to come on. I was tired all the time. I had no energy and, um, a friend of mine talked me into doing a, a, this cleanse, this lemonade diet kind mm -hmm. of concoction. Mm -hmm. And I did that and I didn't last the full 10 days that you're supposed to. I lasted about five days. And, um, and then there was this transition diet before going back to your so-called healthy diet. Mm -hmm. And the transition diet was just having vegetable broth, raw vegetables and fruits for a few days before going back to your normal diet. And I did this cleanse a few times um, over the course of about a year. And I realized that I felt best when I was eating the transition diet, not doing the cleanse, not eating my normal diet, but in that transition period where I was just eating vegetables and fruits. And um, so in 2012, I came back from a vacation that um, where I was just over, I completely overdid it. I ate too much. I drank too much. I, you know, it was just ridiculous, a lot of excess. And I said, I'm going to detox and I'm going to go vegetarian, you know? And so at this point, I'm still not ready to give up cheese, but, um, over the course of six months, I transitioned to, um, a vegetarian diet just gradually. I was eating vegetarian twice a week, then three times a week. And then in July of 2012, I watched two documentaries back to back and they both talked about, you know, eating a plant-based diet and one dealt specifically with the health aspects of it. And that was Forks Over Knives and then Earthlings, which looked at more of the kind of the more um, sensitive topics around, you know, treatment of animals and, and animal rights. And I remember walking into to the kitchen and I told my husband, hey, I'm going vegan. Uh, and he said, OK, I'll do it, too. And so from that point on, I adopted a whole food plant-based vegan diet. Um, this was about 10 years ago, and I haven't looked back since. I mean, it, it reversed my high cholesterol. I lost weight. I gained a ton of energy. I started bike racing at the age of 42. I'm 50 now, and I'm still bike racing. And, um, and I left my corporate career after 22 years to go back to school to earn a master's in nutrition sciences and dedicate the rest of my life to helping other people take control of their health. And I did that, you know, because I did gain that mental and spiritual clarity. Um, when I changed what was at the end of my fork, you know, it was a lot of prayer it was a lot of meditation and, you know, I mean, walking away from a career that took me 22 years to build, um, and just basically start over from ground zero, um, was a big deal. I mean, it was, it's a huge deal for me, for my family. And um, and so when Cersei and I met, which was in the middle of COVID, which was mm -hmm. which is really interesting, we're like 3,000 miles apart. 
Mm-hmm. And um, and so we met um, and um, and started the Daniel Fast of Bridge to Healthy Living. That's amazing. That's amazing. And for those of you who may have just popped in, um, I want to help you all understand like the connection between all three of us. And so I'm going to tell a little bit about my story and my plant based journey. Um, It wasn't my own health that I had um, that was amused for my plant based journey. It was for the health of my younger brother who had been diagnosed um, with cancer for the second time in uh, several years. And um, in short, I was told that either me or my youngest brother would have to donate stem cells um, to help assist him as he um, was on his healing journey. Didn't know what that meant, didn't know what that looked like, but I knew at that moment that I was going to make an extreme change so that whatever I could give to my brother, I could give that to him the first time, um, that it would be the best that I could give him um, and that we would have no question about, you know, like me really kind of offering all that I have to um, assist in his journey. Um, and so I, I love the fact that all of us kind of had this moment and it's mm-hmm. been all connected to some sort of disease, you know, um, something, some sort of dis-ease and disease um, mm-hmm. in body. And I think it's a lot of how many of us began. Um, we had these wake-up calls, right? Um, so I'd love to, to chat with you all about faith and food. So, you know, um, Cersei, you mentioned grief and food, right? Mm-hmm. You mentioned that relationship. You know, a lot of people, they think that it might be extra. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But we really do have a relationship with food. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. Whatever we call it, yeah. what we call it is up to us, but we relate to it. And yeah. we think about the strength of food when it comes to us physically. Mm-hmm. We think about the strength of food when it comes to things culturally. Mm-hmm. Because I'm quite nervous to tell my grandfather Mm-hmm. who I have all kinds of food history with, mm-hmm. that I was going plant-based. Mm-hmm. I was afraid of not being understood. And he's a very understanding man. Mm-hmm. But the alienation that comes with making a decision that is in, in everybody else's mind very limiting mm-hmm. creates a cultural issue, mm-hmm. right? It shakes mm-hmm. things up culturally. But we don't have enough dialogue about food and spirituality. Mm-hmm. So what do you say to somebody new to a dialogue with you about how these two things intersect? Because mm-hmm. I can see someone saying, okay, you're doing too much now. Mm-hmm. It's just food, <laughs> right? It's just food. You're just yeah. eating. Eat what makes you happy. You're going to die anyway, right? I've heard all of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about the intersection for both of you, faith and spirituality. Um, I mean, food and spirituality, food and faith. Yeah, I, I, I think it's one of those things, you know, that are is kind of not really talked about. It's kind of unseen because eating is something I think we take for granted. We do it every day. Sometimes we do it three, four times a day. And we kind of see it in its own separate box, you know, and, and we don't really see how it integrates with everything. From my experience, what blew the box open for me was that here I was, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. I was in a grief. I had gained weight. I had all these things going on. I was praying. So it wasn't like I I was using my faith to try to cope with these things. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I changed what I ate did everything synergize. And the reason is that this is that we don't realize that food actually plays a role in our physical body, which then flows into our mental clarity, which then flows into our spiritual clarity, and they're all synergistic. And so many times we focus either just on our mental or our spiritual, but you can't leave food off the table. I like to say we need to bring um, faith back to the kitchen table because you can't fuel the thing that's, that's holding your purpose with garbage and then expect it to produce at a high level and what we don't realize is that and i think a lot of people don't connect their their faith to their food to their purpose Mm -hmm. is that a lot of us we are you know in doctor's office on medications overweight don't have the energy don't have the clarity for even ideas for even things to to ex to excel in what you're doing. And what happens is we end up cutting our purpose short. Some people are dying at early ages. Some people have heart attacks and they have to recover. And it goes on and on and on. But how we treat our health actually messes up or 
is a contingent on how we live out our purpose. And so, yes, you might even be healthy now, but are you living on your highest frequency? Are you getting downloaded with ideas and, and innovations like you would had you been fueling your body with what it needs to, to sustain itself? That's good. Yeah. That's good. Gigi, you're Yeah, going. and I'll just add that. Yeah, I was just going to add that, um, you know, like an example would be, you know, if you feel like your divine purpose is to be an elementary school teacher, you know, that you knew when you were a child that this is what you wanted to do and you went to school for it and now you're doing it and you're showing up, you know, to the, with those kids at your best self versus not at your best self. And how does that translate into them getting the best experience with you? I mean, because you just never know. You could be you know, one of those students could be a future Supreme Court justice. One of those students could be the next president of the United States. One of those students could be your doctor, you know, at some point in your life. And so, you know, really giving them the best experience is a part of your purpose and you living out your purpose at the highest frequency. And you can't do that if you're coming into the school with side effects from medications, you're feeling sluggish, you don't have the energy level you may have had when you were in your 20s or whatever, that you are not, you know, showing up as your best self for them so that you can live out your purpose. That's just an example. And we all know, you know, we can all probably point to examples when we weren't. Ta- I know I can when I wasn't taking the best care of myself. I wasn't eating the right foods. I can remember coming to work and feeling sluggish, not having the energy, not being able to make the decisions when I needed to make them, you know, and trying to mask it with sugar and caffeine only to find myself crashing and burning like an hour later. And um, and it's and it does it it affects how you live out your livelihood and your purpose, and that then translates into other things, you know, like you know, per, perhaps financial security, um, mm-hmm. perhaps you know, wealth transfer to your children, um, mm-hmm. perhaps you know, a variety of other things, and so really it all comes back to what is at the end of your fork and people want to dismiss that. And I think yeah. sadly, going back to the topic of faith and food specifically, I think Cersei gives a, an amazing sermon. Um, we have a, a boot camp that we're, that we're doing um, at the end of April. And she, she, she does, she does this amazing, has this amazing sermon around how we have used food, food, just become a modern day idol in our lives and and we're addicted to that and so we use that to 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 find that comfort to find that that answer to our problem Mm -hmm. when we all know it doesn't it doesn't solve problems it just creates more problems so when you're reaching for that box of donuts or that big you know casserole of mac and cheese or whatever that that it's not going to solve that problem of whatever the problem is. Um, and so it comes back to the faith thing. Like, how are you um, inviting God into your life? You know, what's that relationship about? And so I, Cersei talks way more eloquently about it than I do. <laughs> but but it, 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 I think it's a great example of this connection between food and faith. Yes, yes. I... You know, I, I I love the examples you're giving about what it means for us to kind of show up in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't realize or we don't want to realize the connection that our nutrition has mm-hmm. or the discipline or lack thereof it has mm-hmm. on how we show up. Mm-hmm. and how we're present yeah. and we might look at that when it comes to physical um physically um i guess strenuous jobs like you know maybe police or firefighters right we're like okay obviously you need to be you know in ship shape for that mm-hmm. but why not as a therapist mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. why not as pastor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. why not as mm-hmm. counselor why not as as a nutrition, you know, as, as a nutritional guide? Why mm-hmm. not as a teacher? Mm-hmm. Those things do require us, mind, body, and soul. And if we completely reject the body component, mm-hmm. we're already weakened in how we, you know, how we give and show up. And I think and that's the, so important. Yeah. 
important thing. Yes, Thursday. And the, no, I was just saying the truth is we wake up every morning with purpose. Yes. Whether you have a job or you don't have a job. You know, you're a parent, you're a mother, you're a wife, you're a citizen. And so you are showing up to the world. So we don't even necessarily have to box it into a specific career, but that is definitely one of it. But it's it's waking up in purpose because we have to show up in life in every aspect. And you may show up just as a better mom. You might just show up as a better wife. You might even just show up as a better friend. And just in that alone, you might even... You know, because everybody has a mission, everybody has a purpose, and God calls everyone to different parts of the field, and it may not be something sophisticated. So you might be listening saying, well, I'm not any of those things. Well, you don't have to be. From the minute you wake up and you breathe, you have a purpose, and you need to show up in your best self. And I think what it is doing is just honoring the gift of life. And it's like, God, you've given me this body. You've given me this temple. You've given me this life. Yes. That you are trying to live through. How can I show up and honor that in the best way? How can I reflect you in the best way possible? And I can't do that if I'm putting toxicity in my body, because what I'm doing is I'm dulling the voice of God Mm -hmm. and I'm dulling the, the, the clarity that can be given to me because I even from my experience I heard God's voice clearer when I changed what I ate. Mm-hmm. How many wow. people have you met who oh, have who I was have... on before? Yeah. I wasn't on the hotline, I was on the wrong telephone, you know, or yes. something. Else. But you, you, know, you just like, whoa. Yes. Was God always talking that loud or was I not listening? And the question yes. was there was a block. There was a block. Yes, yes. I mean and I don't know how many people I know who have fasted in, in, in the way that was dedicated yeah. and devoted. And 100% of the time, mm-hmm. they've been able to hear mm-hmm. clearly. They yeah. could hear and see themselves. Yeah. And they could hear and see God clearly. But then what do we do? We fall right back into habit. Mm-hmm. Because it's just, it feels good. Mm-hmm. Gigi mentioned the fact that we just kind of lean on mm-hmm. what feels good. We have now, we go back to, okay, now that now that I'm hearing everything and everything is clear and everything makes sense in my life, I'm going to go back to my old habits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's all for naught, you know? Mm-hmm. And Didi, you mentioned wealth transfer. And I was thinking about that. You, know, you were talking about, you know, financially, how all these things, you know, you're not being able to physically show up might affect mm-hmm. wealth transfer. Mm-hmm. But the two of you together, as you mentioned, wealth wealth transfer, I thought about what we transfer to our children in the example um, Mm -hmm. that we have with our nutrition and discipline too. Because how many of us are still breaking from um, or have that post-slave mentality when it comes to what we take into our bodies, what we can and cannot control? Mm -hmm. Um, How much of our generational, um, you know, habits are we passing on just because? And then what have we seen in our families when one of us says, no, not doing that anymore and how it turns that, you know, it it turns that that branch, that family branch, Mm -hmm. a different direction Mm -hmm. Um, just because you've shown up and you said, you know what, I'm I'm just not going to do it like that anymore because it doesn't you all don't get my best with that. And you all deserve my best and I deserve my best. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do this with my nutrition. I'm going to do mm-hmm. this with my body. And then your daughter and your son see mm-hmm. that. Yes. And they have an example. They're not having to make it up themselves when they become an adult. They say, I've already seen it. It was in my house. Yeah. That's yeah. wealth. Yeah. That's wealth. That's oh, you all are great. Um, <laughs> there was something <laughs> I said um, that I want to talk about. Uh, Gigi, you mentioned how your cholesterol went from like you just you know deadly to borderline bad right Mm -hmm. and you were there for a few years can we talk about how you've ever communicated with anybody or or talk to people who are comfortable with like borderline bad because it's better than where they were Mm. have you ever encountered good you know like i'm good and and has like just settled into like this is fine because at least i'm not near death Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think, like that. yeah, I would say, I would say there's a general comment around that. I think there's, um, you know, it just depends on what your level of expectation is for yourself in your life. Mm-hmm. And I, um, 
you know, I've had conversations with people who think they eat healthy. This is an example of that. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, oh, I eat healthy. I, I don't eat at McDonald's anymore. I only eat at Chick-fil-A once in a while. You know, like they'll just kind of throw out like one fast food's better than the other kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, um, you know, I think, I think they're, um, it, 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 I think they're missing out on what good feels like. Mm -hmm. And what I love about what Cersei and I do is our approach starts with kind of a four day boot camp, if you will, where you detox from toxic foods for four days. And most people can say, okay, I can do pretty much anything for four days, right? So it kind of nudges you. And, and what happens is they start to get a better data point of what good feels like. Because when you settle into this kind of complacency, you're doing it without having good data or information. And, um, and so when you feel what good feels like, then you can make a more informed decision. So if, if, if I'm talking to someone who really looks at data as something as important to how they make decisions, and um, and there's a lot of people that do, right? You're buying a car, you want to look at, you know, the information about, you know, the car and the reliability of it and the warranty and the features and all that stuff. Um, they're not going to just go kind of go out and just buy the car and why not do the same thing for your health right like why not do the same thing for your body because without your body you're never going to have a car you're not going to have anything you're just not going to you know be able to live your yeah. full your full life so kind of where we steer it is we start with the four days because it, it nudges people in that direction it helps them not be afraid to not eat those toxic foods mm. because it's for four days and they're just eating super clean, you know, whole food plant-based. Mm -hmm. And when you eliminate those toxic foods and then replace them with healing foods, mm -hmm. your body responds favorably to that. And there might be a little bit of a detox, you know, after the second, maybe third day, but usually by the fourth day, people start to feel pretty amazing. They'll lose a little weight. They'll say, hmm, there's something to this. And so then we kind of move on to a, a four week program, but it, it's about, you know, I think what it is, is people will, and I had this mental block too. I'm not saying this to be critical or judgmental because I had the same thing. Like I said, it took me five years, you know, and um, we have these limiting beliefs in the back of our mind, you know, these limiting beliefs, like um, my life, my life is not going to be as fun or enjoyable if I'm not eating these foods. Mm -hmm. um, my, I'm not going to honor my culture, my heritage, if, mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm not eating these foods. Those are all limiting beliefs. They're false. They're not true. They're not true at all. And But you don't know that unless, unless you remove yourself from it yeah. and then realize, you know, wow, I feel great. I feel amazing. I can hear God's voice. I'm totally honoring my culture and heritage. I'm passing on health to my to my children, to my family. I'm being an uh, uh, I'm influencing the people around me, my coworkers, my friends, the people at my church, and and it just becomes so transformative. So there are a, a lot of times people who will think that they're happy where they're at, but as time goes on, as they get older they start to feel like for me, it was around my late thirties when I really started mm -hmm. to feel it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I was just kind of like, okay, what do I do? How can I get out of this feeling and start to feel like a whole person again? Yeah. yeah. And so, and it just depends, you know, some people will make the change quick. Some people will take a long time like me. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's just a matter of when you get to that tipping point, um, and you're ready, we want to be there to help, you know, help you help them, um, you know, make that transition in a, in a very constructive and effective way. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm going to read a couple of comments that are coming through. And then I want you all to just take some time to tell us about the Daniel Fast. Um, tell us about your initiative um, specifically. So it's 
all my very good friend, Dr. A, um, she's a pastor and therapist ah. and is really enjoying this dialogue. Um, she was celebrating um, Gigi um, when you mentioned the fact that you transitioned from your corporate space um, into this you know, new learning space. She was excited about that. Um, seriously, she mentioned that um, Synergy is everything connected and how that really resonated with her as well. Mm -hmm. But she specifically said, we need more conversations like this within our faith communities, which mm -hmm. I think is huge. I think yeah. it's huge because yeah. um, we're talking about culture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, food is central to the universal church. Mm -hmm. um, it is very rare that we have anything, any celebration, anything outside of fried chicken, potato salad, a piece of white bread, um, and a lemon cake, right? Um, whether we're celebrating life, that's awesome. That's awesome. yes, yes. Whether we're celebrating life or, you know, or anything like that. And that, that's our menu, right? Um, then when we really celebrate, we've got all these other things. Yeah. And once again, everybody who's listening, these are not, this is not critique um, or judgment on these things. We're talking about the awareness that we've all had to mm -hmm. encounter in our own lives, all of us being women of faith yeah. um, who still are in these faith communities, um, mm -hmm. but want to see us go from you know fair to good and good to great. Yeah. And so, um, I, yeah, I agree with Dr. A when she says that. So I want to give you all a few minutes. Yeah. And you can talk and I, about yeah. And it's yeah. something that we have to, we have to wrestle with, yes. but you no. Know, and, and, and this is why, you know, you know, when Gigi and I met in the middle of COVID-19, this is what kind of sparked it. Gigi and I were on our own personal journeys, you know, in the health field, but when COVID-19 hit and the world hit a crisis and we realized that people were dying at a higher rate, those who had a chronic health issues or some type of comorbidity like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, were dying at a higher rate, number one. And then number two, people in the African-American community were dying at the highest rate because of all of that. And so when Gigi and I saw this, again, this to me is a wake up call for the church because the black church has always been a central place for resistance, for activism, for, for, for empowerment. And for some reason, we also have to bring that in because when we look at it, we have the number one cause of death in America is heart disease and that mm. period, end of statement. Mm -hmm. And we're having believers dying in a disease that is preventable by diet. And so for the church cannot ignore that. And so we have to kind of get to the point because there was one time, there was one point in time where pastors used to smoke in the pulpit mm, mm, mm -hmm. and they didn't re until they realized that, wait a minute, smoking caused cancer. It's not bad. We now have to get to that point where the, the research is there that these type of foods are inflammatory and actually cause cancer, cause heart disease, cause disease. And now we have to get revolutionary and say, we have to promote that not to be in our temples. Yeah. It sounds radical because, but when we look at it now, we would never smoke in the church. If we saw a pastor, we would usher him out, you know? <laughs> we have to come to that same understanding that we had to go with everything else that was considered toxic. We have to now put that nutrition on. The number one cause of death in this country is because of what we eat. And so the mm. has to be able to accept that and be able to filter that into now as a place of healing. And so that we don't have the disconnect where we feed our spirit upstairs and kill our bodies downstairs. downstairs. We, we have to get to the point where we're feeding upstairs and we're feeding downstairs life yeah. in yes. both spectrums. And yes. it's going to be a battle because we have to know the data. A lot of churches don't know the data. They don't know that these foods are killing them. They don't know that it's tied to heart disease. They don't know. And this is where Gigi and I are so passionate about with the Dan Fasa Bridge to Healthy Living is like, listen, the fast that you're doing in January and people are losing weight, feeling spiritual <laughs> correct, it's the fast that you should never end. Mm -hmm. We should just doing this from January for 21 days, feeling these benefits, hearing from the Lord, losing weight, get, you know, feeling mm -hmm. like, you know, we're on the right trajectory. And then as soon as the 21 days is over, we go back to the regular way of eating. Yes. The Daniel fast from what our perspective should never end. And when we look at the life of Daniel 
and all the missions that he's done from the lion's den to the prophecies to the church to the prayers to everything that you look at the remarkable line of daniel it started when he drew the line in the sand and he said i'm not going to eat the king's diet he didn't defile his temple and he had the ability to fulfill his purpose That's and i believe that we need to be modern day daniels and draw a line in the sand and, and live out our purpose in the church as well. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. That's good. That's good. So tell us, tell us about what we should know about your initiative. Um, those who might be interested in, mm -hmm. in your work. Um, is it a program? Um, what kind of commitment is it? Because yeah. I'm certain somebody is like, hmm, this might be something I want to do. <laughs> Yeah, we um, we have a variety of ways to get plugged in. We have a Facebook group, um, Daniel Fast, A Bridge to Healthy Living, and you can find it on our business page or just, you know, go into the group search and do Daniel Fast, A Bridge to Healthy Living. Uh, we'd love to have you a part of that group. We do a lot of things within the group. We have a monthly prayer for your health. Um, we have a cook and chat where we do, where we cook a, a dish um, that, usually ends up on our recipe website, danielsplate.com. And um, we also have a boot camp coming up at the end of April where um, people can sign up for that. And it's going to be a very transformative experience, very intense, roll up your sleeves, mm -hmm. take action, get the results, um, kind of a boot camp, And, um, and so that is, you know, something that, uh, you know, we're really excited about. Um, and I'll let Cersei talk us through kind of the four or four days or the four steps yeah. that we approach. So, so what we're doing with the Healthy Christian Woman Boot Camp is it's going to be over four days. Um, we're going to um, expect everyone to come in doing the Daniel Fast for the four days because we want you to be able to experience this with mental and spiritual clarity, number one. But on day one, we are going to tackle um how to get a god-centered self-image concerning your health so that's going to be day number one day number two we're going to be talking about breaking our addiction to food because as we talked a lot of this has to do with the fact that we are addicted to these foods day three we are going to be talking about um, breaking generational patterns of poor health. And we talked about passing new legacies to your children and then the last day we are going to talk about take um getting the courage to take action because I think a lot of times we have so much information about our health, but it's the courage to take action. And so it's going to be a power pack four days. It's going to be um, in a private Facebook. We're going to go live um, every night with a sermon, um, homework, um, and it's, it's going to be really power packed. And so that's one of the biggest things we have coming up. We also have a four week um, course, a Daniel Fassa Bridge to Healthy Living, that if you're somebody that says, you know what, I want to transition to a whole food plant based diet. And I also want to connect my health to my faith. Yes. Um, we have a four week program that will do that for you, um, kind of give you the support, the nutrition, the spiritual lectures, everything that you need to get into that path. That's and we have a prayer for your health journal as well. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Are you all surprised by how many people are are driven to this work? Um, have you had people, what kind of testimonies have you gotten from, yeah. from these initiatives? Yeah. Yeah. We, we've had, uh, we've had some pretty powerful testimonies and we, we published a few of them on YouTube and on our website, but um, the one that's kind of sticking out in my head right now, uh, there's two of them actually. Um, one is a, a woman who um, was a longtime vegetarian, and she um, decided to try this program. And, um, and she was always an avid exerciser. Um, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a situation where she wasn't physically active, but she, it was more on the food side of mm -hmm. things. And, um, and so she came into the program and she said that what was the changing point for her, there were two kind of pivotal points for her, was um, one was inviting God into her health journey. I mean, she never thought that. And it was it was a huge game changer for her um, that she didn't, she didn't think to ask God for help were her words. Mm -hmm. And um, and that that just made a huge difference. 
and then learning about the nutrition in terms of how to eat healthy. So again, she was eating vegetarian, but it's mm -hmm. there's a way to go about eating whole food plant-based um, mm -hmm. that will accelerate the weight loss. Um, mm -hmm. And so once she learned that and she you know, went into the four week course and everything. And she learned that she's now fitting into the skinny clothes in the back of her closet. <laughs> and um, she described her closet as, you know, her heavy weight, which was her current weight, you know, back then. Mm -hmm. And then her um, kind of middle of the road and then her skinny. And so she's yeah. way in the skinny part. And she said, and those clothes are loose on her. So hmm. she- Her age, that's her yeah. age. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So she, she it was really transformed um, with that, and she's a powerhouse. I mean, she's um, she's over seventy and running. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. she's she's really taken this to a level, you know, a whole new level. Um, yeah. The other testimony is with a woman who um, came into the program in September of last year, and I can't describe her testimony as well. I, I would love to link it or share it somehow because it's so powerful. But she um, she basically reversed her diabetes. I mean, she lost mm. a lot of weight, reversed her diabetes. Her A1C went base, dropped about like two or three points and is in the normal healthy range, um, lowered her cholesterol. And, mm. um, and, re and around the time when she was wrapping up the course, um, she was invited to run for circuit judge in her community. And so she's doing that now. And she never thought she would be in a position to, to do something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and she feels physically able to, you know, to go for it, you know, yeah. um, whereas before she didn't feel that way. So um, she's a huge testimony. She's you know, she's, I, I'd love to share the link because she yeah. just does an amazing job, you know, kind of describing her story way better than I'm doing right now. <laughs> no, but that's all wonderful. And this is probably maybe the third time I've had a dialogue um, on this platform with someone um, or actually a pair um, who committed to a plant-based diet and lifestyle mm -hmm. and have reversed reversed um, the toxicity in their bodies, reversed the disease in their bodies. It is a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is something to this. Yeah. Um, it requires a commitment to yourself to mm -hmm. want to go beyond your bare minimum. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, this is encouragement, I hope to many, many people. Yeah, and I, I saw someone on here say, running at 70, wow. And you know, yes. <laughs> Gigi and I say this all the time, and this is why we feel like it's not about the food, it's about purpose. When you mm -hmm. are healthy for your purpose, God should be able to call you at any stage in your life. Yes. And I think we we put our retirement hats on the shelf. God doesn't deal in retirement, but we mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. We'll put our retirement because we're like, okay, I'm 60 now. I'm, I can't walk as well. I can't go up those hills. And so we kind of hang up our ministry hats. But yeah. there is time. Ministry is timeless. And your purpose yes. is timeless. And God should be able to call you at 40, at 60, at 70, at 80. Mm -hmm. and if you are healthy for your purpose, you are ready at any time he calls. Yes, we have this expectation to deterior deteriorate right. um, and not to say that our bodies will not get worn, you know, and tired over time. Mm -hmm. But if we expect to fall apart, mm -hmm. we will most certainly fall apart. Mm -hmm. But if we expect to to be strong and we do the things required right. to be strong, then we will be strong. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we extend that purpose. We extend that work. We extend that ministry. We extend our presence. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who have, you know, lived certain ways um, with their diets and then they have a child, you know, later in life and they're like, oh, I want to live for them. Mm -hmm. And it's great. Really, really glad to hear that you've got a muse now, but you've got to repair. Now you have to repair things and then do the extra when we mm -hmm. could just decide now today to just do as well as we possibly can with our practice. So when we have these changes in our lives, when we have these unexpected grandchildren and, and, you know, all these things, wonderful things that pop up, 
that we don't have to say, oh gosh, well, let me fix things now. But mm -hmm. I'm so glad I'm prepared to receive these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To to yeah. deal in prevention and expectation instead of having to repair mm, and, yeah. and feeling regret. That's I mean that's a whole different dialogue we need to have about the emotionality you know behind all of it. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not going to do that. I want to know. <laughs> well, but I want to know what your dream is for your initiative. What give us both of both of you share your dreams about um, yeah. the Daniel Fair. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, oh, go ahead, Cersei, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say my dream or our dream, or I can speak for myself first, but is to impact as many um, women's lives to be healthy for their purpose, mm -hmm. to live a life that is disease free, that is, um, that they're 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 living to the, the highest potential in terms of their health and that they live and fulfill their calling that they have in their lives to the best of their potential so yeah. that that's my dream is to impact millions of women in that way that's good. yeah yeah i i actually very similar i was just going to throw in a little data point there's 3.2 billion christians in this world mm -hmm. um according to google <laughs> and <laughs> I just, you know, I would love to impact as many as I, I possibly can, um, mm -hmm. you know, to live out their purpose. Um, they're, you know, these are, that would be huge because it's not just, I mean, when you think about it, it's not just, you know, fitting into that cute little black dress mm -hmm. or, you know, showing up to that high school reunion, you know, looking fit, you know, mm -hmm. that's all fine and dandy, but it's so much bigger than that. You know, mm -hmm. it's so much bigger than that. I mean, we talked about some of the things in terms of, you know, just showing up, you know, for your purpose in terms of wealth transfer to your family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, it's so much bigger than, than, you know, fitting into that size eight dress or whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And I love that. I mean, not that men cannot benefit from this as well, but I, I love the focus of women, particularly because it is, um, I, I think there's a, a stereotype that is that we live into probably a little too well, um, where we are to always kind of um, dim our light mm -hmm. or diminish ourselves so that others can live and shine and thrive. And we do this naturally when we have children or if we, you know, have a spouse because we want to see them happy. Right. Um, but their their joy and their happiness um, in our family units, at least, are connected to our health. If yeah. we've taken on that role to to, you know, allow them to to shine. Right. And to be the best that they can be then we can only do that if we are the best that we can be. Yeah. That's super important. And I think we still struggle with that. It wasn't too long ago that I did a dialogue, had a dialogue um, with women regarding rest mm -hmm. and how I'm like, give yourself permission mm -hmm. yeah. to rest. Give yourself permission to be strong. Give yourself permission to be well. And when you are at your best, mm -hmm. the rest of the world is at its best. Um, mm -hmm. Because we set tone, we set culture, mm -hmm. um, we we set you know those those you know that that path um, for others to do the same thing. Our examples do that. So I, I love that you have that focus and I love that you've been with me this evening, ladies, and that you're willing to, to share your stories. I tell people all the time that in this space and other spaces that stories are a sacred ground, um, that we want to make sure that we hold these stories um, with humility and with expectation that as we plant them in the hearts of others, they will grow and flourish and prosper. So we take the stories that you've given us and we, 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 will nourish them um, so they can grow beyond this moment. Um, Dr. A, who's been our biggest fan this evening, says women's bodies are always under assault in our culture. This conversation is very empowering. And we certainly hope that we continue having such conversations and we do begin to live in a freedom. Something else we haven't talked about, we don't have time, but the idea of not just women, but Christian women, particularly, um, we're we're needing to fight against that cultural expectation of um, of being 
secondary. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that is very embedded in the interpretation of a lot of our theology. Mm -hmm. And it's not what God, um, what, I, I do not believe I say this with, with strength, um, that that is what God intended for us. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's just so much in it, so much in it. So five minutes left and I want to do what I call rapid fire affirmation. I have a statement I'm going to read, the statement and a word, and I just want you to fill in the blank with a word or a short statement that best suits you. That's hey. it. Don't overdo it. So um, we'll do uh, so each each one I ask. We'll do GGs and seriously GGs mm -hmm. like what to do like that. So, we'll do that. so the statement is: It is in my nature to the first word. It is in my nature to see blank. It is in my nature to see blank. See possibilities. Okay. All right. See the good in others. Yes. It is in my nature to feel. Mm -hmm. To feel. I'll say... Ex it's a it's a fine line between anxious and excited. So I'm not <laughs> <laughs> <Be> excited. <laughs> I'm just <being> excited. <laughs> okay, I'll say um, I was going to say excited, but I the second thing that came to my mind was see was feel the struggle of others. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It is in my nature to attract. Ooh, to attract, um, I'll say people who 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 want excellence in their life, who want to go go to the next level. Yes. Um, I I tend to attract um, people of love. Yeah. yeah. It is in my nature to reject. Mm. Um, I would say I would say negative negative people or negativity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Reject okay. like hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Almost done. We're in, it's in my nature to embrace. Mm. To embrace. I would say people who are trying, you know, people mm. who are wanting and trying. Yes. And I think for me, change. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. It is in my nature to love. I would say just people and those we share this planet with. I mean, yeah. Yeah, same people. Our global neighbors, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and finally, it is in my nature to be. I would say tenacious, persistent, hardworking. All of those. Okay. Um, I guess this in my nature. What just came, and this is just what comes to my head is just to be me, really. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Good. So once again, I want to thank you both for spending this time, for sharing your story, for impacting um, beyond this moment. Uh, it's going to be a ripple for the rest of your community that you're targeting and for the world. I think the world will be better because of the dialogue. And so today I want to um, just be in agreement with you. And I pray that you and God are co-creators in this world where you all see possibility and the good in others. You feel excitedly anxious and anxiously excited and the struggle <laughs> of others. <laughs> that you attract people who want excellence in their life and people of love. 
so you reject negativity and hate. Embrace people who are trying and to embrace change, to love our global neighbors, and to be tenacious, persistent, hardworking, and you. So Ooh. I pray that. I hope you receive that. I thank you so much for this evening. It's been wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Monique. I yes. love it. I loved it. <laughs> I'm so glad. And Dr. A, her, I'm going to give the final words to her. She said, great conversation, sisters. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. It has been wonderful. Awesome. Thanks.